Hi everybody, it's Carolyn again. I'm back at Francis Locum State Park. It's a beautiful sunny day and the trees are not completely leafed out yet, but they're definitely getting there. It's May 21st, 2020. Today I am going to be hitting the Deer Trail and the Makanakwa Trail. I'm also going to be hitting the Hilltop Trail just a little bit. So I'm going to be walking down the Deer Trail. I'm going to be going down through some beautiful pine trees. I'm going to make a left and hit this little bridge here. We're actually going to be hitting a lot of water today, which is really cool. We're going to continue on and we are going to go across another larger bridge over more water. We're going to be making a left onto the deer trail. You could take the, deer, the upper deer trail and go that way, but you would be missing one of the best parts of this hike, in my opinion, and that's walking through the wetlands. So we're going to be walking this way. We're going to be going straight kind of towards the lake, and we're going to hit some wetlands in this area, which are absolutely beautiful. Uh, you'll see frogs. You'll see tadpoles. In early spring, you'll hear the peepers chirping, and you'll see geese and things like that. So we're going to continue straight on here and we are going to continue along the lake. So for the hike that I'm doing, you do not want to take any of the rights. You do just want to continue along the lake and eventually you're going to come to this little area here. If you continued straight, you'd actually go to the road, but we're going to be making a right and we're going to hit the Makanakwa Trail. We're going to stay on the Makonakwa Trail pretty much throughout the whole thing and we are going to be at the borders of the park. So you are going to see houses, you're going to hear traffic and things like that. And I'm just going to continue on here. I am going to hit the Hilltop Loop Trail very briefly. I'll be getting onto that right around here and then I will just be continuing on that right back down to the deer trail. I'll be retracing my steps back. I'll be going across the bridges again and right back up to my car. So I'm parked here in the parking lot below the water tower. The playground is actually up in this area as well too. So we're going to be starting right here. So as we walk through, I'm getting further away from the, the sound of the grass being cut in the background. Um, hopefully you can hear those birds. You can see that the lake is out to our left and we're heading to the right here. So there's a lot of maintenance going on in the main part of the park today. The good news is that we're going to the other side of the park, which tends to need less maintenance because there are no um, playgrounds or really any parking lots over there but hopefully you can still hear the sound of the birds and see this beautiful pine forest area that we're going through. So it's really muddy in the park today as usual we do get lots of rain here in Pennsylvania and I am going to continue up along this trail, you can see the blaze ahead. Wow, there's so much more greenery here than the last time that I was here, which was probably only maybe two or three weeks ago. So everything has really bloomed out and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Wow, look at this massive, massive pine on the trail. So now we're coming to our second bridge. It's going to take us onto the west side of the park and towards the wetlands and the Makanakwa Trail. 
so I am over on the other side of the park now and hopefully you can see the power line there um, and that's actually I'm going to be following that for quite a while so I'm out on the deer trail and as you can see it is a road you can see also up that way that is the upper deer trail which you can take the upper deer trail however you would be missing one of the best features of the park in my opinion which is going to be happening down this way uh, which is the wetlands so i highly recommend you make a left and go to the wetlands so here we are approaching the wetlands and as you can see you don't have to trudge through the wetlands there are these great concrete pylons that you can walk on also look at everything is leafed out it's so beautiful oh my gosh the last time i was here this was not leafed out like this but it's so beautiful i'm not sure if you can see it or not but there are some tadpoles in the water now, when I was here a couple of weeks ago, there were a lot of tadpoles as well, too. And, um, yeah, you could just see them. Not sure if you can actually see them on camera or not, but they're here. So make sure as you walk through here, you look in the water. It's just so beautiful here today. I really, I don't want to leave it. But there are some exciting things in the other part of our hike as well, too. So I will move on. Maybe at the end of the hike, I will stop again. Check out the beautiful wildflowers. So I'm continuing on now on the deer trail. On this side of the park, the, the trail along the water is called the deer trail. Whereas on the other side of the, side of the park, the trail along the water is called the lakeshore trail. So the trail does narrow and this side of the park tends to be a little bit more overgrown um, so you do just want to make sure that you're wearing appropriate clothing appropriate footwear things like that so that if you hit pickers or if you have to walk through mud because the trail is so narrow that you could do that so i am continuing to see uh, trails on the right hand side the offshoots and they are blazed red as well too which makes it even more confusing but um, again the hike that I'm doing is I'm going to stay to the lake so there are some really muddy areas here and what I recommend doing is if you encounter a muddy area, take a look around. A lot of times there is a little path around the mud. So that's what I am going to do. And just watch out because there are a lot of pickers on these pads. So again, you know, I tend to wear long pants and I also have my boots on. Now I'm going through this gorgeous pine grove. There's lots of hemlock. There are some deciduous trees along the water. And ooh, I'm seeing some fern, which I haven't been seeing. So that's exciting. You'll see here there is a tree that is down and um, the trail does continue on this way but you would be heading to basically a road. So we are going to be going right and again I use the All Trails app which really helps me but there's also this little stake right here with the orange tie and if you look closely it does say Makanakwa on it. So we're heading that way.
so here is our split and as you could see there is signage here for the buck trail if we wanted to go back if you want to go back right on the buck trail um, or on the tree here it tells us to go left and that's what we're going to do we're lots of trees down in this area and we do get some really exciting storms out here in Pennsylvania and with so much so many dead trees especially with the woolly adelgid on the hemlock trees and the borer on the ash trees uh, there there are a lot of dead trees around So this trail is windy and again I'm not paying attention because I have been making this video but I continue to check my map and I continue to check my All Trails app as well too to make sure that I'm going in the right direction. So even though we do have the red blazes out here on this side of the park, every trail is red blazed. So you could be veering onto the Buck Trail or the Hilltop Trail <laughs> or onto the Upper Deer Trail. Um, so you just want to make sure that you're checking that you are going in the direction that you want to be going and I highly recommend the, the All Trails app for that or again you can get a map too. Okay so now we've come out to the trail again. We, we've come out to kind of like a T area and if we go left that is going to take us out to Green Road which we don't want to do so we are going to be going right. So once you do make the right onto this trail, be sure to take pause and check out this gorgeous, gorgeous shagbark hickory. I'm not sure what kind of tree it is, but there's a lot of shagbark trees in Francis Slocum, but this one is just beautiful. The bark is really, really separated from the tree and it's a double trunk tree so two trees grew close together and now they are huge and it's just really 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 gorgeous make sure you stop and take a look at this one of my other favorite things about this hike is the the foundation from an old house that is out here in a clearing, which I assume used to be farmland. So not too long after the shag bark on the right hand side, you will see, you want to look, once you hit a clearing, you want to look around and look for the foundation of this old homestead, as well as some other foundations there as well too, which could have been a smokehouse or an outhouse or something like that. You can see the elements of the foundation all around here. So there, there was a house here once. And because this is so cleared out, it makes me think that this was probably a farm. So it was probably somebody's farmland. And they lived in a house right over here, which is now completely overgrown. Although I think you could see the chimney right there. Um, and they cleared this land out and they probably farmed it. Um, and of course they found all of the rocks and stones in the ground and made those gorgeous stone walls which are still in the park today. Um, but yeah, this whole area, it adds a whole other element to the hike. I love how you come out to this clearing and you can see in the distance we have some flowering trees out there. We get a nice view of the mountainside and we can see that it's only partially leafed out but still gorgeous nonetheless. Um, up here we can see that there is also a foundation here too so I'm not sure you know if that would have been a smokehouse or something like that. Straight ahead is this tree. I think it's a dead tree but it is a really cool looking tree nonetheless and um, kind of veering to the left of that tree 
in the back there, you could see some more foundation of something. So maybe that was the outhouse. I don't know if the outhouse would be that far away from the house, but all of this was all cleared out. And it just, it's a way to come out and get some sunshine during the hike. And it is, there's grass on either side now. Um, and it is truly, truly beautiful. So I have come to kind of a cross section area here. And it does tell me that I could go left and do the Makanakwa Trail, um, or I could go right. And according to my map, a right would be hooking me up with the hilltop trail, which is, I actually do want to be on the hilltop trail for a little bit because I'm heading, I'm going to be heading out of the park. So I'm making a right onto the hilltop loop trail, I think it's called. So I am at an intersection again, and I could go right or I could go left. Um, and of course there's signage, there's like, there's a yellow blaze there, there's red blazes everywhere else. Um, they really don't differentiate the trails with different color blazes. Uh, but I am, I am going to go left because I do want to stay on the hilltop trail for just a little while longer. And then I will be actually making a quick right to go back down to the deer trail along the lake. Really, really pretty piney area with lots of pine needles on the trail, which I love. And up ahead, you can see we have a beautiful stone wall. So we have two stone walls. We have a lower stone wall and we have an upper stone wall, which both are in pretty, pretty nice shape. And so we're actually going to be kind of like walking through them. I'm not sure what the purpose would be of having two stone walls. I can only assume that it was two separate properties and uh, they were defining those boundaries, but it makes for a really, really pretty hike. Um, really, really nice area here. So at the second stone wall here, we're, we're going to be going right. Yeah, and here I am. I'm, I'm walking along the stone wall. So just keep going. And it looks like up here, I am going to be making a right. It's a little circuitous, um, but it'll take me right back down to the water. So if you wanted to, you could go left on the upper deer trail and make your hike a little bit shorter. But with somebody like me, I, am, I do like more mileage on my hikes. Um, if I'm going to take the time to go to a state park, I would like to be out hiking as much as possible. So sometimes with these hikes, I am, I'm not taking the most efficient way, but I'm giving myself more mileage, which I personally like to do. So here we are approaching this lovely stone wall area. It's like a stone wall promenade and it is really really pretty these these walls are actually in great shape and I am assuming that they were built you know pre park establishment and um, that they were built by the people who originally settled this land or own this land um, but I am continuing down through these so that's yet another reason why I make my hikes the way I do. They're not always the most efficient way, but there is scenery that I really love and that I really want to experience. And walking through the stone walls is part of that experience for me. I really, really love it. They're so, they're, they're really beautiful and they are something to behold. And as you can see, we're coming up on the lake again. Yay, lake! I'm so excited to see the water again. It looks so nice. Look at that through the trees. It's sparkling. Ah, it's so beautiful. I'm so excited. So here I am traveling back again over the concrete. Watch out for the goose poop. So we're making a right 
onto the, or actually we're, uh, we were on the deer trail. We're making a right to continue on the deer trail. Back over the bridge, back up to the car. So I am on the other side of the park now and I'm just retracing my steps on the deer trail back to my car. Thank you for hiking with me today and I hope you enjoyed the day as much as I did.